right, guys, how we doing today? It's uh, this Tuesday, the 2nd of April. So you guys, uh, you saw the poll results here. First up is the TQQQ. This is our uh, NASDAQ ETF. It's pretty interesting. Right, so now, I, so I know you can't see a lot in here. Now, so I've just got a daily chart up here. Now you can see I've got all the history here. I'm just wicking off the lowest low just, just so I, I've got something to pull from. Now, when it's like this, when you've had this kind of parabolic move, I, there is very often it'll be more advantageous to try and get the separation of the wave structure by going into log scale. So we get the, the compression here and we, ex, we get the expansion here. So I think this gives you a better look at it. So thus, I, I think we can lean into the one, two, three, four. Now, by this count, I have us with the top in on the fifth. And I'm standing by that, and I'll show you why. Because if I take it out of log scale, the depth of this retracement is not insignificant. It's a bit of a tell, in my view. So with the proposed completed five-wave impulse finished up here, we'd be anticipating a retrace of approximately 50%. So if this is going to be a 1-2. So if I just grab this low down here and get right, right on it, and get right up to my high here. Well, we've gone well past the 50, and we've went, we've just, you know, a bit of a front run here on the 618, possibly. That's a, it's a bit heavy for a front run, but here that's, well, that's 30 bucks and uh, with 2888. It's just really not that much. So this, this may just be a front run on the 618. Hard to say, but we could certainly, it's a contender for a 1 2. And it, th this is, you know, this is a bit of a proxy for what. I think still is is a probable outcome for the for the S and P. Well, we just we have not seen the depth of retracement here to support the idea that a two is in. Now here, I think we can we can lay, lean into that. So the the thought being that if that's that's the low, well shit, I guess it doesn't doesn't matter where I start this. But we come back here. So if this is a one, this is a two, and now we can potentially go off to to new highs up here. So I guess if I'm gonna. Uh, I'd have to go to primary here. So we, we'd have a very large 1-2 that's just gone in and much higher prices to come. Hard to argue with it, right? Technically, right? We, everything completes up here. I, I can get every everything to complete to give me that 5. I've got almost to a 618. That's the ideal location for a 2. Right? So it fits better here than it does in the S&P. <clears throat> Certainly implies much higher prices. One thing that, that's of note that I think is interesting is that this low here, it's within a day of the what may end up being at this point, may end up being the low in all of crypto. Right? So Bitcoin bottomed around the 18th. This looks like it's bottoming around the 19th. So very, very interesting how that's perhaps correlated. So let me open this up now. So let's go to a four hour and we'll take a look here at what's what's happened now coming off of this. So let me zoom in here a little bit. Let's open it up here. So now I'm out of log scale to try and get the subdivision here a little bit better. <clears throat> so I guess we can take this off here now. So we, we have our proposed two in down here. I've got a I've got an ABC down here. It's, it's not the it's not, the the finish is a little it's a little tricky here. I, I think we, we can do it this way, though. I, I think we the, the 5 into the A wave is solid. The 3 into the B solid. Now, we get kind of a wonky. It's a diagonal. So here, here would be the 4. So if you see this. So here's the 4 overlapping the 1. Oh, shit. Come here. There's the 1. So well, let me open this up even more. So if we have this coming down from an from the A wave, A, B, C into the B, I think you have to go one, two. So you get a little A, B, C here, A, B, C into the two. Now it's deep for two, A, B, C. It just barely qualifies here to give you the three. So you have to allow for this very skinny four here and then the final rip down for the five. So it's it's... It's a little unusual in terms of its structure. So if we take the length of the one projected from the two, right, so you look here and you go, oh, well, three's not longer than one. Well, remember, it doesn't have to be the longest, just can't be the shortest. So then we look at the length of the three compared to the five. So if this, the proposed ABC of the third in the diagonal, if that's my length of my third, here's my four. Well, here would be 100%. So we see 
that one is the longest, third is, is the second longest, and the fifth would be the shortest. So we have the extension in the one. You know, it's a little bit of a struggle to get it to fit, but I think I think that's the that's the only reasonable way to get there because you need to get the you need to get it to finish here, and this is the only way I could get a three, four, five into this low, and now what's come off of it. So there's got to be a way to fit it, and I think that works. Right? So so one, two, three, four, five gives us the A, B, C into the two low. Now coming off of this, that's where it starts to look better for this to hold is the two. So I think one, two looks like three is in yet again. I've got all the subdivision I need here. I've got an impulse in my third. So wicking it off this way. So if I bring over this as the one, one, two, one, two, well, let's see, it's there. One, two, three, four, five. So checking just length as you would, just to, just to be sure if that's the one and that's the two. So I bring it over here. Let's get right on that pivot. Okay, so we just barely long enough. Now, what's interesting here, if the, from this one, two, here's your high probability zone for, for your third, coming right up to the one, six, one, eight. But the subdivision, I don't think works as well. So I think we've got to go into the three here, down for the four, we hold the one. So at this, uh, this degree, we hold the one, so we get our impulse here. Now, it's possible this gets relabeled, that the three gets put up here if this is going to continue to go without a retracement. That's so I can't eliminate that possibility. But right now, I think I've got a candidate. So we can do it this way as well. So if I look at the length of the proposed higher degree one to bring it over, well, we're through the 2618. So we're, we're definitely into an extension here in the third if that's correctly identified as the one, two. Three, four. So let, let's check that. So from the two through the proposed three, well, we've come to the 23 to the tick. So if, if we're gonna come up here, we can just use that algo target. So if we're gonna come up here and get that, what that's, that's gonna give us here, the proposed, uh, that this would be the one wave. Let me get this degree down. Let's go, um, go sub, sub minuet. Okay, so the coming off of the two here, one, two, three, looks like the four could be in. So if we're going to get this, this little push here to complete the five here, so we've got a, an impulse off the one, so just teeing it up as you would any completed impulse. So we'll just use this proposed hypothetical. Of course, right, I don't have that target. But here's, here's the next trade we're looking at right here. So if this is going to be the one, then we need to come down here in some sort of corrective structure. Right, so this potentially just, just structural support, but that, that would make sense. So we go off something like that. So we'd be into the, the completed one of the degree higher. So coming off of this, so we'd have one, two, and then going up three, four, and five, right? You gotta put them somewhere. So let's go to, uh, oh, we'll go to green, and let me go, uh, oh, shit, hang on a sec. Minuet. Okay, so we'd have one, two, so very bullish, right? So it's implying much higher prices. So it leaves you kind of trying to reconcile, well, if the NASDAQ's going to go, right? The S&P's got to go. So we're, the, the, the count in the S&P, I think, is the, more, is the more difficult to envision, this kind of roadmap. Because, now th this makes sense because we've got a two, whereas in the S&P, it's, it's a little tougher to get. Get, get comfortable with the idea that we put in a two, or right? so that remains to be seen. But right now, right, so you got to trade what you see, not what you think. So despite the fact that I struggle to get my head around the idea that in the S and P we could be just in the one wave of the fifth wave, that is so insanely. Well, I shouldn't say it that way. That's so remarkably bullish that I'm I, I'm struggling with that a, a little bit. But here in the in the in the TQQQ, I mean, it just makes perfect sense, right? So the two's in. Off we are in the one two. So here, I'm, I'm much more comfortable being a buyer here at the 50. Now, in the S&P, it's the same thing, whether it's an A, B, or 1, 2. The, the, the next opportunity here for a swing trader on, on a degree this high is going to be waiting for the retracement. Now, could you trade the 4 into the 5? Well, you're a little, you're a little late. You're a little late on that. Let's, uh, let me get this off here. So... You know, it's kind of, yeah, yeah you're, you're late to the party here. So if, if that four, now, if we get a little more depth in this, so, so if, if this is going to do something like this and then go, may, maybe there's an opportunity then. But this just looks to me like the three, four could well be in. So even if I go down to an hourly, 
A, B, it's not great. A, B, C, but if we blow up that high and we start to get impulsive, well, then you just, we're going to have to resolve that that's, that's what we've got. So from the two through the four here, it's pretty skinny, pretty skinny on the channel that we're in. So as long as we stay in this, it's hard not to, not to like this as, as a candidate here. So if we're going to get the subdivisions, all this is going to play. Now we don't have this yet. So there may, now here you could, you could be setting up for the one, two. So that's not terrible. I, I'd be, I think that's, that may be an opportunity here. So we, we would be waiting for some sort of a retrace to get into the two, pardon me, we'd be waiting for the one of the fifth to complete and trying to catch the, the, the entry to get the third of the fifth of the one. All right, so if that makes sense, that would put us up here completing the one. So it, where's the next trade? So you're, you, I wouldn't want to be a buyer here as we approach that, that pivot. All right, so yeah, there's going to be, well, one, there'll be stops sitting there. So that can that certainly can be fuel to, to kick this higher. I just wouldn't want to buy right into that potential resistance. Right? Some I, I like I want to wait till it retraces. So I'd be looking for the retrace here to get long on this. So the channel is a nice nice potential spot. So if you got right because we, we don't know where this ends, where this 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 proposed one wave of the fifth. But if I got something like that, then I like it a lot. Right. So that potentially your roadmap here. So there, there is potentially a trade setting up, but I think you're too late here for the buy off of the four and you're going to have to just sit patiently and wait. Well, shit, man, good, you know, have at it if, you, if you're comfortable with that breakout. But for me, I'd be waiting for the retrace so I can get that. So if we can get that little opportunity into, into this 50 to the 618, because remember this is proposed one wave of the fifth of the first. So it's, as it's a, I'm, I'm looking for the two, I want to wait for that depth to get there. So the 50 and 618 is right where I'm looking to be a buyer. And then there's shit, nothing wrong with that. All right, let's show that. If you're going to get that push into it, but remember, it, you know, be, be realistic about how far that can go before we set something like that up, right? And then, then you get the bigger one. So I, this is one to be watching, certainly, right? If you're an ETF trader, I'd be watching here. That, that's potentially all there. There's no reason. I mean, it's relatively low risk, right? So there's no reason not to take that trade. So yeah, this could end up that we, we this could be A, B, there's going to be a deeper C, but you know, the risk reward here is very friendly, right? It would be a, a modest amount of exposure to try and get that. So you're looking five to one, six to one, if you get the whole ride up. So very low risk potential entry here, but you're going to have to wait for the retrace, right? And this, this could, no telling where that goes, right? That could go much higher, right? So, but to, to chase up here, I just, the, the risk isn't worth the potential reward because at some point there's likely to be, likely, right? Nothing has to happen. Likely to be a little retrace to give you a better opportunity to get into that with lower risk. Here, so if you buy it here, Right, so let's say you're like, shit, man, I like the breakout stuff. Well, if you buy it here, where's your stop? All right, you can put it down below the golden zone. All right, so what are you looking at? Maybe you get two to one risk reward, or you're just going to have to use an arbitrary amount. So you're not let, you're not using the market to define when you're wrong. You're just using your, your trading plan in terms of risk tolerance, which, right, you got to use something, but I would propose to you that's, Sure, you could get away with it. Yeah, you could get that push. So we're gonna, there are going to be stops sitting here. That'll be some fuel. That might get it going. But you also you know, have the potential for a little little bull trap to set up the retrace. I, th you just, I would approach with caution if you're thinking about being a buyer there. It's just, yeah, it works sometimes. But o over time, I think you're better to wait for the retrace. Right? Low then you can let the market dictate where you're wrong rather than just your wallet in terms of what you can afford. Let the market tell you where you're wrong. And then if we get at this three, four, five, well, shit, you've got a great, that could be six to one, seven to one if you're going to get the whole move up here. But again, this is a potential area to be taking profit, not thinking, oh, shit, we're off. We're, ne we're never going to retrace. It's just going to keep going, keep going, keep going, because this is not inevitable, but probable. At, at some point, there'll be a retrace. Well, it's just the nature of the way the markets move, right? So just, you know, if, if you catch that, you know, don't, don't let greed get the better of you. All right, guys, that, 
that's it for now. I've got a couple more to do. Back to you in a bit.